Hey, deserving listeners, love is blind. Let's watch. I love you so well, and I, we have so much in common, and we could talk to you about everything, and it's fun, and I laugh with you a lot, and I love talking to you all the time. <laughs> You're such an amazing person. <laughs> But yeah, it sounded like a butt was coming. So Jarrett was kind of soft proposing. He's like, so what would you say if I asked you to marry me? And the way she was responding, she's saying all these positive things. And I, But the tone was, oh, no, she's going to have a butt there. So, you know, it's good. She's being honest. And I think she has feelings for Sal. And uh, it's too bad for Jarrett because, um, you know, he seems like a really, really good guy. There's always really been two people I've just really felt very strongly for, and I feel like my other connection is just, um, I feel like I'm just drawn more to that. Okay, so let's contrast this with her, with Shayna. I don't know if I've posted this. <laughs> Sometimes I don't know when I'm gonna post things in order, but, Shayna was proposed to, you know, by Kyle. And although verbally she said yes, her body language was like anything but yes. And then immediately after being proposed to and accepting, now she's engaged to Kyle, she goes to Shane and says, essentially, I'm in love with you. And I want to be with you. And I'm going to make you the best, you know, I'm going to be the best wife to you. And please choose me, that kind of thing. I mean, I'm paraphrasing, but so... You know, contrast that with Mallory. Mallory likes both. She likes Sal. She likes Jarrett. Jarrett is proposing, kind of, and Mallory is saying, "I, I feel bad. I'm so sorry. You're a great person, but I think I'm in love with someone else." So let's just contrast that. Same with Shane. You know, when Natalie and and Shayna were coming at Shane. We can contrast Mallory's response uh, with, and uh, we can contrast uh, who else. There's other people who have who have been honest about these sorts of things, and people who have been dishonest about these things. Yeah, ugh, that's rough. I mean, the amount of feelings that they build, you know, in these pods, it's significant. You know, the amount of intimacy that they have. And then, of course, on international television to be shot down, you know, it feels bad anyway, right? <laughs> but, and I think, you know, maybe we can all call this like the Jessica syndrome where, because for uh, Jarrett, he liked Mallory and uh, Iana, right? I think I'm pronouncing her name right, Iana. And um, so it would be logical to be like, well, I guess I'm going to go with Iana now. You know, with Jessica, she liked Barnett, and then she went with Mark afterwards. So is that a good idea? Because it kind of starts the relationship in this. I guess what we'll see is, can that work? Because we're seeing a number of people, you know, I'm looking at my notes right now. We're seeing with, with you know, Shayna, if she goes with Kyle, will that work, given that she was originally in love with Shane? For now, and can this work? Can it work to, to fall in love with some pose or to really be attacked and then to go, okay, I guess I'll go with number two. I don't know. I could see that being a recipe for disaster, but I, I, I could also see that working because it'd be similar in the real world as if you're, you fall in love and you're really wanting to be with someone and then they dump you and you're really heartbroken and then you meet someone else who isn't them and then you fall in love with them, <laughs> you know, like it, it, except in this context, it's, it's all overlapping and it's all very concentrated and of course on TV. I can't hold my feeling. I mean, I don't. I, what can I say? Like, man, it's over. <laughs> yeah, it's rough for 
Jarrett, he's sad. He's crying. He's frustrated a little bit, I think. And he's just like, well, I don't know what else to say. I'll just, I'll leave. And for Mallory, she's, she feels like crap. She just feels so terrible. And it's a loss, right? It's a, a loss of a friend at the very least, you know, you're, and you're hurting someone. When you have compassion and empathy, this is what you go through when you break up with someone. It's, it just feels terrible. I did, I had a, had a date with Mallory earlier. And I like asked a question. If I was to propose to you, how would you feel? You know, and she pretty much told me like, our connection is cool, our connection is strong, but I feel strongly about someone else. I didn't get the response that I wanted, you know? Jarrett is a very impressive person. I mean, he is, He maybe I'm just relating to him. He's, he talks, he's saying the things that I always wish people on these shows would say. He's just laying it out there. He's just like, look, I, you know, because someone like Shane would just, you know, obscure or something. Or someone like Shana would, like, stuff it or something. And, and for Jared, he's just like, hey, I'm just gonna, I'm just gonna be honest with you. I was going back and forth between the two of you, and earlier, I asked her, you know, what she would say if I asked her to marry me, and she basically said that our bond was strong, but she was in love with someone. And there's so many other ways to. I kept expecting because I, I see it so often on these shows, for some defense to kick in. Like he didn't have to say that I asked her the question. You know, I asked her what she would say if, if I asked her to marry me. He could have said something like, well, you know, I just, like, we could imagine someone else being like, yeah, I just had a meeting with Mallory and, you know, things didn't work out. But, you know, you, Iana, I'm really into you. You know, we could imagine someone saying that. Imagine Shane saying something like that. We can imagine him saying that, um, you know, I just further thought I you know I'm not into her I don't know there's just so many ways in which one would defend against the ego onslaught that this experience is but he's standing on it I'm guessing he was raised extremely well and has a ton of confidence because of the way he was treated that's just a guess and so he can just admit it. he's just be like here it is <laughs> like and uh, I'm not gonna lie uh, this is what happened and I I don't know where I, I'm guessing he's going to say, and I, you know, I like you, and I don't know where I'm at right now, you know. So, and also, Iana was super cool too, you know. She, he he was like, yeah, you know that I've been seeing other people, and um, or he he said, you know that we've been connecting, and 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 then he kind of said a little bit, and then she said, yeah, you've been dating other women too. I I know, <laughs> you know. So you know, they both seem like they're being super cool about it, you know, because. I often am thinking, even with 90 Day Fiance, it's like, if you could just be honest about the situation, just be like, hey, this is my situation, like, then it gives you, it gives everyone a chance to just be safe. I think that's what I'm talking about, is like, if you can be honest and you know yourself, then you're much more trustworthy. I deserve someone who wants to be certain about me. And I feel like this whole process is all uncertainty. And I feel like that's why I was going back and forth every day. I think her telling me no just really kind of just gives me my validation that I needed. You know, because I I was I knew that I can see myself with both of y'all. Yeah, I can see both sides. From Jared's side, it's like I could have seen myself with either one of you. And I just went with one because I thought, you know, it was a 51% versus 49%. That person said no to me. And that just kind of tells me my answer. It, you must be the one for me. And that's kind of how he's framing it. I get that. And from her standpoint, she's just like, I, I want I want to be, this isn't the way I envisioned the story to be of my love life, of my marital life. I didn't want to be that, that other person that you settled for. Like, I'll always wonder are you settling? Do you really want me? Because you had a choice and you didn't choose me. You chose someone else. Now, what? I, but then he will say, well, I kind of feel like this whole process has a ton of uncertainty with it because it's because it's so quick and we can't see each other. We can't like hang out with each other. So there's, just, there's a lot of uncertainty anyway. And yeah, I mean, I, I see both sides totally. And I, I wouldn't blame Iana for just being like, yeah, I... I this is really hard for me to say, but I, I just, this isn't the way I want my love life 
and my marriage to begin. I want to be with someone who, from the very beginning, you know, wanted to be with me and only me. And I think her telling me no, like it just, it's, it made my decision easier. Do you feel strongly enough about me to propose? It's a great question. So if Jarrett, you know, is going to be convincing, I'm guessing what he needs to do is like say, I love this about you. I love that about you. You know, it's not just because you happen to like me. It's like, these are the specifics that I know about you that I like, which I think would, because I think that's the door that she's opening up. Let's see what he says. I'm terrified. I never want to feel like someone's second choice. Yes, I am strong, but I am very, very fragile at the same time. Say something, I'm giving. Yeah, we're all, I guess, fragile in this way. <laughs> we, we all have needs to be to feel special in someone else's eyes. So, you're, you know, this idea of like, you know, she's saying, I know I'm strong, but I'm also fragile. And that's fine the way she wants to frame it. But what I would say is, you're strong enough, Iana, to recognize your needs. You're strong enough to be a human being and to not hide that. You're strong. This is strong. You're not fragile. It doesn't feel good, but it's an illusion and a fantasy, a delusion that somehow strength equals the ability to, what, not have emotions? Huh? What? <laughs> it's interesting because as I watch this, the, the reaction that everyone has when their heart is broken is deep. Things that we don't necessarily even see on 90 Day Fiance, um, maybe that does happen, but the, the feeling, it's just, it feels, which I think really illuminates how much bonding is occurring in these pods with these people. And I think, and some of them will report, like, you don't understand until you experience like when you're just sitting there and you can't see the person, all you hear is their voice and you're sitting there talking, there's no distraction like you. It's a feeling I've never had before. I remember people in season one saying that as well. So you really get a sense for just how intense this feeling is because, you know, with 90 Day Fiance, they still live their regular lives. They still go to work. They, they're still with their friends. Here, they're just it like concentrates the love feeling. It's like all that you feel. <laughs> Like there's no distraction, no responsibilities, no no friends to tell. You're just like completely just like basking and sort of marinating in the love. And then when your heart is broken, it feels even the more worse. Some crazy ass hands in life. You've proven time and time again at every obstacle that, that has been in your way, everything that's been thrown your way, like you've powered through it. And that just goes to show, you know, the testament of your character. Um. I had a long talk with God this morning, and... So, that's good. He's saying, look, you're a strong person, you've been through a lot, and you've persevered, and I really respect that. That's, you know, I, I don't know for Iana, but, you know, it's nice to hear, for sure, but I don't know if that's necessarily the romantic thing you want to hear, right? You What you want to hear is, you're my soulmate, and you're the one for me, and I love you, and I want to be with you, and... Now, I don't know how Ian is going to react, and I don't know what else Jarrett's going to say, but um, I don't know how convincing this is, what, what he's saying right now to her. Let's see. Let's find out. Ayana. Will you marry me? So are they allowed to just say, hey, could we give it a couple more days? Or do they have to say yes or no? Is, is, it, is, it, is it a binary there? Because we've seen this now a couple times where the person being proposed to was just like, wait, wait what, what, what's happening? Um, I think what Yana would want to say is, could I give it a couple more days? Let's, let's see, well, let's see what happens. That, <laughs> that is not what I expected you to say. You have no hesitations. I wouldn't be standing right here asking you to marry me if I did. I mean, I guess <laughs> it shows that he wants to be with her. I mean, 
if he's going to propose, and that that's an interesting question. It's just like, wait, so you don't have any hesitation? The other day you were proposing to someone else. You don't have any hesitation with me? And he's just like, nope. So maybe that would convince her. Let's see. I mean, love is scared, but you know, I'm, I feel like I have enough. I know what I need to know to know that, you know what I'm saying, this can be successful. Are you sure? I'm positive. I got you. Yeah, I think from the outside, when I see this, it's like, yeah, I mean, I think Jarrett legit was falling in love with two different women. But from the inside, if you're Iana, you're just like, how could you love me if you loved her too? <laughs> that doesn't make any sense. So I, I think when you're in that, it's harder to imagine that being true. Um, but it sounds like she's opening her heart. I don't know if this is a good idea. I never know. Maybe, the, you know, this is a terrible idea, but I don't know, I'm kind of pulling for it. Um, they would have some ironing out to do <laughs> because of him proposing to someone else. But I think, you know, in the long-term relationship, it's like you have a little hiccup at the beginning. It's totally fine. You know, I have a, a friend of mine, actually. He um, is He's been married for a long time, 25 years or something. And he met his wife, uh, who was dating one of our other friends. And so he met his future wife as the girlfriend of one of our other friends <laughs> and, and knew her as you know, our friends, and then they dated, they dated, they dated, they broke up, and then they started going. So, you know, and they've been married for 25 years, so it can happen. Yeah, yeah. And I do think they'd make a great couple. I mean, they seem, in terms of personality, to be compatible. I don't know that, because they didn't really show a lot of the two of them talking, but I don't know, I could, I could see it working. Well, and I'm just excited to see her again. I'm definitely in my head. I'm very attracted to him emotionally, but physically, like, I, I don't really, I don't know. I mean, there's no, like, there's nothing wrong with him. Uh-oh. And of course, you know, this is the whole premise of the show, right? That um, that can happen sometimes. <laughs> like, you fall in love with someone without seeing him, and then you see him, and you're just like, oh, there's just nothing wrong with you there's I just don't feel it you know attraction there's a lot of things involved in attraction so it wouldn't be unusual for this to happen and good on her for being honest about it she's with herself and now maybe it'll grow but this doesn't look good for Sal um, it's just it's not something I can really put my finger on I guess I don't know I, I this is like throwing me off because now I'm like not feeling good about it. <laughs> and I was feeling really good about it. <laughs> yeah, it's totally understandable. I mean, any, particularly you people who are dating right now, you people who are dating right now, it sounded aggressive, that sometimes you look at someone and you're like, yeah, I mean, they're attractive. I could see how someone else would like them, but not for me. Like, I, there's something about it that just kind of, I don't know, there's just vibe or the chemistry or the pheromones or something was not right about that and you know this is why we write all the poems and the songs and you know it's an art form we don't understand and science in my field of psychology has tried to measure this but you know let's say oh it's you know it's the pheromones it's the sweat glands it's you know it's this it's that and yeah we we see little signals in the data that seem to indicate well you know maybe there this can be a factor and this can be a factor but the gestalt of yes or no is just one of those magical things at this point. Maybe in 100, 200 years, we'll be able to measure that. But at this point, it's just one of those magical things. And, and I kind of like it that way. You know, it's just like you can't really measure that. There's you know, Science at this point cannot measure attraction or love or, you know, that feeling you get when you just like, yes, I want to be with this person. <laughs> Six couples fell in love and got engaged sight unseen. Wait, what about all the other cast? There were 15 and 15, so they are excluding, what is that, like uh, nine, 18 other people. Oh, I mean, we, you know, we saw them, but so I guess they didn't fall in love with someone. Okay. But I would have liked to have heard from them, you know, like, why didn't they fall in love or what, were they close to falling in love? So I guess all those people are just like 
swept aside. All right, well, that does it for that episode. Everyone out there, please take care of yourself because you deserve it. You really, really do.